been present. I'm inspecting for swelling, discoloration, and deformity. I visually inspect for the Q angle, and I can also measure the Q angle with the goniometer. So if you were standing, thank you, is for what I'm looking at is centers here. This goes down the tibial crest. Excuse me. This goes towards the greater trochanter, and I'm measuring that angle. Okay, so I'm measuring the angle of difference between the tibia and the femur. Jump back up. Um, if she were lying down, then what I would also look at is leg position and femur position. Okay. Um, so I look at leg position and femur position, and what I'm looking on that is for a fracture or luxation. And what I would expect to see is that antroversion or retroversion. Okay. Uh, you tend to have a internal rotation with the dislocation and external rotation with the um, subluxation or I mean the fracture. Greater trochanter that we're not really going to go for. Okay, you either have to hook this way or come in from behind, but the iliopsoas goes into that lesser trochanter here. We're just not going to do it for modesty reasons. Okay. We got our greater trochanter here that we're looking at. Okay. We got the femoral neck, which the femoral neck, if there's the greater trochanter, the femoral neck is kind of in this area. So normally I have my fingers here. Lesser trochanter, we're looking at iliopsoas problems or avulsions, or tendonitis or avulsions of all these. Um, here we're looking for IT band syndrome, the snapping hip kind of syndrome, okay, and the femoral neck we're looking for fracture. So either way you want to do it, if you want to say it, do it. I just like palpation all the time, come back and look at all the time. So if that makes sense. Soft tissue, we've got watercepts, so we're looking for muscle pulls, we're looking for, um, in this case, myositis ossificans is a, again, a special condition we're worried about here, or we're looking for pulls or contusions on here, I just want to strain, okay, so my hands are going to but, so we're looking at the quadriceps, okay, so in general, I kind of do two hands down because we've got the four different quadriceps, okay, so the quadriceps, the hamstrings, Stress tests, so we have special tests, and one special test is that Trendelenburg test. And the Trendelenburg test, if you don't mind standing up for me, is we suspect that maybe she has a weak, 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 I can't talk today because I'm on camera, I've seen the camera, is we're, we're suspecting we have a weak gluteus medius, so we ask you if you just do the same as I do, just stand on that side, okay, and that's good. Want to actually see as this side of the hip go up, and you can relax. Is we want to see this side of the hip go up. If this stays the same or drops, that indicates that there's a weak gluteus medius on this side, which could explain why you're getting IT band syndrome or other different problems. Okay. So that's the um, Trendelenburg test. The next test we have is the I've got them on a different tool over here, but this is the Thomas test. Okay, and the Thomas test. Test. 
this again, let's just keep saying this is the injured leg, is what we're going to ask you to do is we want, I want you to keep this leg on the table. Just relax. Okay, so if at possible, try to not let this leg lift up off the table, but just stay relaxed because I don't want you to force to keep it on the table. And what I want you to do, just keep this leg relaxed. If you can grab this leg and just pull it up to your chest. Okay? If I suspect, I could also give a little pressure in what I'm looking to see if that leg bends. And there's actually a little bend because you were on the table. Okay? But that, that would have stayed straight. So what we suspect is there's a tight iliopsoas that starts picking up like this. Okay. Um, if I saw some bend and didn't realize that you were bending here because of that, you don't have to do it both ways. I could do it also off the edge of the table. So I'm going to put another one. I'm sure you know. Um, is I could also do it off the edge of the table, and you can see if that leg starts lifting up. So that was the Thomas test for a type of iliopsoas. We have the leg length discrepancy. So the leg length discrepancy, having SI joint problems, or IT band problems, or something, we're thinking maybe it's the, the legs. So basically, whether you're doing inches or millimeters, whichever one is fine, okay? But if we're looking at true leg length, we go from a bony landmark to a bony landmark. So anywhere on the medial malleolus, just be consistent on both sides. So let's say we take from the middle of the medial malleolus up to an excuse me, the anterior superior lax spine. So I'll measure that. Okay, so I come out 36 here. Same thing on the other side, and I come out with 36. Okay, so the true leg length is the same. Notice I cheated there a little bit. There's a funny trick you can do. So there's 36, right? If I put it there, because you know sometimes people have a hard time finding the ASIS. It's a cheap way to find the ASIS. Is it's got to be somewhere in there because there's my 36. So there it is. Okay. Um, apparent leg length discrepancy, I'm thinking, okay, her legs are really the same length, but she's getting a lot of SI joint problems on one side, not the other side. So maybe muscular-wise, she's tightened off. So this is the one where we measure from here. Do you mind finding your pillow? This one, you can leave your shirt down. But so there's 38 degrees, 38 inches, 38 millimeters there. And then I'm actually just going to use that up to the pivot point. And there you are. There. Oh, I changed it to the top. I've got more here, obviously. Uh, on the other side, <laughs> it's like, changed it to the top to the middle. So then again, that's part of that consistency on that. True, I did middle to middle. And on this one, for some reason, I did top. So when I start to go over there, it's, like, it's not reaching the middle. It's the top. Okay. So that's consistent. Okay. So that's the apparent leg -like length discrepancy. side that was injured. So if you don't mind turning towards me, but lying on your, so there, if you just roll over your side. Um, so here on the overs test, this is the leg that we're worried about being tight. Okay. We bend the other leg, which she naturally did a little bit, okay, just to stability from rolling over. And this is that one where I'm going to put some pressure on the hip. Raise the leg, hyperextend the leg. Okay, and remember, I'm going to drop this so I don't want to shock you. And I just drop it to see if it'll drop. If it's a tight IT band, remember, we tend to get the, it drops and hangs, or it kind of drops all the way and then bounces back and hangs. Okay, so hers dropped all the way and stayed down. Okay, that's good. So that was the overs test for a tight IT band. Um, then we move into our would just be, can you go ahead and flex, let's say we're testing this leg again, flex that up to your hip, okay? So we're looking at flexion, that's 120 degrees. I can't do extension in this position, okay? Um, so did we do it 
the city? Did we do the city? I think you did the college. Oh, okay. Let's do the city. I'm just thinking that's going to be a little more modest. <laughs> it just dawned on me I was about to do some of the other, and I was like, mm, yeah, let's do the city. Okay. Um, so, so we could have done flexion here, so how high could you flex it up? We can't do extension here, but I've watched you get on and off the table, and I know that you have 130 degrees of flexion, okay? So abduction would just be pulling your legs out, okay? So I'm looking for about 45. Adduction would be, can you just kind of cross that leg up and over, okay? So really what you're looking for is that person that, oh, they're so tight they can't even cross their leg over the other leg, okay? Um, Yeah, you do. Okay. Okay. So it, it, I was doing it the old style way. Okay. So that's right. So so goniometers sitting there. Basically, um, our pivot points are our um, greater trochanter, right? This is the midline of the chest. This goes with the femur pointing down towards the lateral epicondyle. I could have had you raise it up, readjust that. Uh, we'll say you flopping over. I would do the same thing with the same three landmarks. You go into extension and aim this for the lateral and the condyle. Okay. So those were our flexion extension, right? Um, add an abduction, okay? That's why we started lying down. So come on back. I was just thinking modesty wise, that's what threw me off. I was kind of, oh, let's be modest. So remember the add and abduction here is I'm looking at this leg, the left leg we keep looking at. So I'm on the anterior superior lax spine. I aim this towards the other anterior superior lax spine. I'm doing this at the midline of the patella and I would abduct outward. And there's the funny thing where I really need another therapist to help me, you know, to keep that because you know, we really do want So I know when you go to do this, you can just sit there and tell me you don't have that extra person that can lend a hand. Okay. So we have the abduction that way versus the adduction would be that leg crossing over with this in the exact same position. So the ASIS pointing other to the other ASIS, you know, bringing the leg across, not letting it roll because that gets you a little extra. That's fine to say on the test. Is here's how I would do it, but I kind of run out of hands and I'll have another person help me. Um, internal external rotation. Now, the clock, and luckily you don't have a low back injury because now you would be hurting by this time. Remember, this is the one where the fulcrum is here on the center of the patella. This is perpendicular to the ground. Okay? Um, and what we're looking at is they both start perpendicular to the ground, and how far can out, which is really what? Internal rotation, perpendicular to ground, tibial crest, okay, so that's internal rotation, versus this is external rotation, tibial depth, okay, so we got our two rotations out here. So those are those. Then we've got um, different uh, muscles, so we could do the, okay, can you push up against my hand? So you can either do it this way as a you know, push up against my hand and move, okay, and I'm going to be cruel and not let you move. So if you're overpowering them, then the other way was just what? Can you lift up? Now don't let me push you down. I mean, those are both flexion tests, right? So that would be the iliopsoas, which was the iliacus and psoas. I'll break it up and get two, okay? Extension, don't make the person flip over. Just hold their leg up for them and say, okay, can you push down against my hand? So you push down against my hand, right? Gluteus maximus, hamstrings, okay, for extension. Um, add an abduction. Again, we were just playing with do them all from this position instead of having them flip-flop all over the place. Okay. So an abduction could be me just push out against my hand. Gluteus medius, gluteus minimus. Okay, excuse me here. So, I'm supposed to name two, so adductor magnus and adductor longus. Okay. 
this is funny. If I'm testing internal rotation, I've got to give you resistance from going out. So push out, and then turn in and turn the other foot. So she's turning in and doing external rotation. Right? So internal rotation is name two adductors. I've already done magnus and longus. So let's go with brevis and pectinus for the fun of it. Okay, so name two. And then external rotators are the group and the most famous is the piriformis, gluteus maximus, anything like that. Okay. So we do that. So those are all of our motions. And then um, motor and sensory neurological is we kind of have our abbreviated one. So motor neurological would be could you flex your hip for me? Flex up, that's L1, L2. Could you extend your knee? That's L3. So L1 is up here, L2 is down here, 